All right, Talia, do you want to kick off our our final thoughts here? Absolutely. So uh, kicking off uh, final thoughts here, I am a a white female uh, who is pale with long uh, brown hair and a red turtleneck. And what we wanted to do is just offer a few concluding thoughts here. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about an article that I read uh, over a decade ago now that I think really lays the groundwork for thinking about this and really points us in the direction of things can change, echoing, echoing back to what Ethan said earlier today. And this piece was written as a collaboration among communication scholars Abhay Sukumaran, Stephanie Vaisik, and Clifford Nass, and a psychologist, Melanie McHugh. And what these scholars did is they put people in one of two different environments. In one environment, it was formal and serious. The colors were subdued. There was a photograph of a bookshelf. The CAPTCHA asked people to um, use words like understanding and appreciate. And the comment box said, please enrich the discussion. The other environment was casual and informal. It was a colorful palette, a picture of a sandbox. The CAPTCHA used words like sloppy and complain. And the comment box said, got something to say. And what they did is they tried to figure out how do people act in these two environments? And wouldn't you believe it, they act totally different. The design of these spaces can have such a profound influence in terms of what people do. And over the past three days, I think that all of us together have created this particular digital environment. And for me, and I hope for you as well, this environment has been thought provoking. It's been experimental in all the ways that grand experiments are where, you know, some things didn't totally work. And we love that you guys rolled with uh, rolled with us uh, on those. And other things were just so meaningful and, 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 and deep. And I love the connections that we were able to establish and collaborative. And I really look forward to working with all of you to envision and create the sort of digital spaces we want to see in the future. Uh, the sort of spaces that help us function as better societies and better publics than as atomized individuals. Amen. Um, I wanted to share one last quick story. This is Eli. Um, I'm a bearded white dude um, and with brown hair. And um, I want to tell you about my grandfather, who was a German Jew who uh, fled to the UK during World War II. And one night uh, he got a knock on his door and there was a policeman there. And he said, uh, Mr. Paris, you have five minutes to gather your belongings. So my grandfather picked up a few items of clothing and two books, uh, Pascal's Pensées and an organic chemistry book because he was, he was studying. Um, and uh, I always think about that because I'm not sure that those would be, that would be what I would grab uh, if I had five minutes and the police were at my door. But Anyway, when he arrived at the police station, it was clear that something bigger was going on because there were hundreds of other young Jewish men who were studying in the uh, UK there. And it turns out that Churchill had thought they might be German spies, and so he ordered them imprisoned. And my grandfather all of a sudden was being treated as a prisoner of war, and he was put on a boat headed across the North Atlantic um, with 300 other men they were in the hold, it was dark, there were no lights, no bathrooms. Um, you know, he, he remembers what it sounded like when torpedoes would whoosh by um, because uh, there were Nazi submarines in the area and the boat that left the day after him sank. So finally they make it across the North Atlantic and end up in this work camp in Quebec. Um, this is not a part of the World War II story that you hear often, um, but there were uh, work camps for, for people like him um, it wasn't a concentration camp, but it was 14 hour days in the cold doing hard labor. And the one piece of luck that my grandfather had was that there was this corner of his bunk where after the day was done, um, he could take out his books and he could study because the light from the spotlight in the camp just happened to like illuminate this little corner. And um, at first he did that alone, but what he found quickly was that um, other people there had brought their books too. And that after the lights went out, they started to kind of create this impromptu university um, in these little patches um, where they would teach each other. And so um, he learned chemistry and he learned philosophy and Russian. Um, and actually, and this is a true story, there's a New Yorker article from 1970, something about it. Five men from that camp um, went on to win the Nobel prize in their fields. 
So after a while, um, Winston Churchill realized this was a mistake and he allowed my grandfather and others to return and join the war effort. And the things that uh, my grandfather learned there um, really set him on a path for the rest of his life as a food scientist. So to me, you know, partly this is a story about how easy and maddening it is to throw human life and talent away. And I think that's the darkness that um, we're all, you know, that's around the edges of the conversation that we're having that, um, that we have to push against. But partly to me, it's a story about how even in those dark spaces, there are these little patches of light where we can share ideas with each other, where we can come together. And um, our, our job is to build and grow those patches of light. And for me, you know, this week's conversation has been one. So I'm so grateful to all of you for the light that you've brought to it. Thank you. Uh, love, love, love that story so much and such an inspiration. That's really wonderful. Um, let me start by thanking Eli so much because a big part of his vision has been articulated in this. So if you could join me, I think we can take a quick minute off of uh, off of mute to give a big round of applause to Eli and to thank him for all of his uh, work and leadership in putting this together. So. Yay! And then second, I want to start uh, or continue, I should say, our thank yous by thanking all of you. Uh, this has been an incredibly rich and provocative few days, and we learned, and we were challenged, and we were inspired. And that's partly the bounty of all of these wonderful ideas, and it's partly the chance to meet so many of you. Um, it's, it's easy to feel like we're missing things because we're not in proximity with one another, and certainly that I feel that right now. <laughs> But it also highlights for me that there were things we were able to do in this virtual space that we might not have been able to do in ways that we were able to connect that we might not have been able to in, in physical space. So I'm delighted that I was able to share this experience with all of you. And it proves to be an important thesis, which is that it is possible to bring together a group of really different people and leave with more connection and more ideas and more momentum. And as we keep reiterating, hopefully this is the beginning of something bigger. Uh, we really want to help. So let us know how we can help. Let's all work together after we sleep, of course, but let's all work together on this. So let's go off mute again and applaud everyone here who worked to create this experience, which is every single person on the Zoom. <laughs> well, we're off mute. Let's thank Talia as well. Talia has been an intellectual inspiration for this whole thing. Thank you so much for your partnership with us, Talia. Hey, Talia. All right. Um, just one, a, a few more final thank yous um, that I want to share. Um, and one note that I want to say, we've, we've learned a lot from this experience. Um, thank you for your patience and your feedback. And um, we've got a survey going out. We really want to know your honest uh, feedback about what can be better when we do this again. One thing I, I'm, we're particularly interested in is that we've noticed that while you know, our participatory groups were curated for diversity, especially racial diversity, that didn't always manifest in practice. And so we're thinking about that. If you feel like it, we'd love to welcome direct feedback on what would make this a more welcoming space going forward, especially for black and brown folks. But back to thank yous. Um, I just want to thank everyone who helped make this happen. It literally was hundreds of people who contributed to the signals, to the event, to the way that we've been thinking about this, the amazing team at MAP, and I hope we can get the slide uh, up with all of the names, um, but um, the team at Crux, which did the technical uh, back background for all of this, which was incredibly complicated, um, the team of artists who helped who you saw throughout the program, who are documenting and helping us see things in a different way, the uh, sign language interpreters, the new public team, our intellectual collaborators, our partners and our, our funders. Um, you know, this was really something that took a, a huge amount of energy from a, a, a ton of people. And I just wanna say special thanks uh, to, to a few people, to Neelam and Romy who have been on this journey from the very beginning, we did it. Um, and I'm so grateful to both of you, um, to Tamar and Gina at the uh, Center for Media Engagement, um, who have been uh, doing a ton of the heavy lifting uh, on the signals research, to Melissa and Ruthie and Beta um, 
in particular at um, at MAP, who uh, made this experience happen uh, and bared with us when it was complicated and, and built something beautiful, to Jamin, who helped guide us all through it, um, to Sarah Drinkwater and Paula Goldman, who got us started on this journey and actually kind of uh, put, put Talia and I together on this, to Nico Melli, um, who's helped us uh, find a home at NCOC, and to Ethan Zuckerman, who's just been intellectually uh, especially important to us in, in thinking through some of this. So thank you all. We are so grateful. Um, and thank you again to everyone here who has given us so much to think about.